What if I told you readers are appreciative of concise writing? Well, on the one hand, it's true. But on the other hand, I could have just said readers appreciate concise writing, and that would have been more, well, concise, right? So let's look into this. Why do some verbs lead to a concise sentence and other verbs lead to a fluffier sentence? That's what we're going to look at today in one quick tip for writing more concisely by checking your verbs. All right, so let's get some examples up on the screen to compare some different verb behaviors and which verbs usually make a concise sentence and which ones don't. Well, if we look at what we have on the screen now, we might start to see a pattern. We are having a discussion about writing. This is a video explaining writing concisely. And there are three ways you can create a new account. None of those are grammatically wrong. None of them are bad but none of them are super concise either. So what's going on with them? Well, the red verb, as we see, that is the verb to be. And I'll talk a little more about which words count as that verb in a moment, but as you see, that verb tends to bring fluff. Why would that be? Well, because it doesn't mean much on its own. So we have to end up bringing in more fluff. What we wanna do instead one easy hack, in fact, it's my favorite as far as making my own writing more concise, is to avoid the verb to be and substitute a visual verb, something the reader can imagine and remember. And that will actually make the sentence simultaneously more informative, but also more concise. As you can see from We Discuss Writing, this video explains writing concisely, and you can create an account in three ways. Discuss, explains, create, those are all verbs that I can imagine someone doing. A little easier to visualize than trying to visualize someone ising or aring. So that means we're gonna kind of slash those verbs out, right? We're gonna try to reduce the use of to be because they do tend to not be very concise. So which verbs are to be? Well, here is um, an almost exhaustive list. These are most of the verbs to be, and the issue we find with it is that they're not all spelled the same am, are, was, were, is, etc. They sound like different verbs, but actually they're all the same verb, the verb of just a state of being. I am, that's great for philosophy class, not super great for writing concisely. For example, if I said he is, so far my reader knows nothing, by the way, could be he is here, he is hungry, he is upset, we don't know. If I said he is responsible for cleaning the kitchen each night, maybe so, but I could have just said he cleans the kitchen each night in one visual verb, and we would have learned a lot sooner. Again, he is, can you imagine him ising? Not really, maybe he's sitting there being alive. He cleans, can you imagine it? Certainly, right? That's easier for a reader. So avoid these red verbs as much as you can. Okay, they attract fluff. Um, so let's try a couple. I'm gonna run us through a few comparisons of writing with a to be verb versus a visual verb, and then I'll invite you to try one too. All right, Liliana is in charge of, is in charge of that project. Is there a verb for that? Yeah, directs, manages, oversees, etc. So with Liliana directs that project, I get the information out there quickly, and I've used almost 50% fewer words, right? How about Edgar? Edgar is in support of work from home options. Is there a verb for that? Yeah, supports, likes, enjoys, loves, prefers. I put that one with its own separate listing because I wanna mention here a side benefit that we get. Not only are we using fewer words if we say Edgar prefers instead of Edgar is in support of, but we're actually giving more information about the situation too because prefers means there was more than one option. Before that, if we just said supports, likes, is in support of, we wouldn't really know that about the situation. So when we're really careful, we can even choose a verb that not only informs us about the person, like Edgar, but about the situation too. We are in receipt of your application. This is something we often say when we receive something because we don't know how to politely say, yeah, I got it. And so we end up saying, I am in receipt of 
right? It's okay to say we've received your application or your application has arrived. Like we've talked about before, it's okay to sound like a human being in our writing, right? We don't want to sound bureaucratic. And this is one way to avoid bureaucratic writing is to reduce that verb to be, like is, are, was, were. Okay, one more. It is important to note the document's updates. Well, just tell me to note them, right? Please note the document's update. That would be a more concise way to say it, and yet we're learning just as much in fewer words. Okay, so if you'd like to try it out, here are a couple examples for you to try. And your goal here is to revise these just by figuring out, is there a verb for that? for that kind of long fluffy section with the is, are, was, or were type of word. So here we have the shift manager is responsible for doing inventory. The new manager is interested in weekly team meetings. If you'd like to, go ahead and pause me while you write. If not, go ahead and continue and we'll look at some revisions right here. If you paused me, here are some answers. If you didn't pause me, that's fine. You can see what we came up with over here. The shift manager does inventory, completes inventory. It doesn't have to be a fancy verb, right? We want a practical, useful, clear, visual, meaningful verb. Not a fancy verb, not a verb that makes us sound overly sophisticated. It's okay to say does. It's okay on the second example to say wants. It doesn't always have to be a fancy word. But in each of these cases, we see that the reader now gets the information sooner and that the writer has saved themselves a handful of words each time. So try this out. It's one of the best hacks. What I would suggest is go open up your Word document or your email that you feel like might be kind of wordy. Go to the search bar and just type in is. See what comes up as highlighted because anywhere you've used an is, it's possible that there's fluff there. Then you can go back and search for are, was, see if those sentences have the fluff. And working on those by putting in a visual verb might tighten up the whole piece of writing. All right, so try it out. I'll look forward to hearing how it goes. Bye.